and I'm gonna record this. Um, so that I can share it with folks who weren't able to make it tonight. Uh, but for those guys that are here, great to have you here. Let's see here. Tracy or Kelly, can you see on your screen that's being recorded? Yes, uh, so it's yes. recording. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. All right, and then maybe, um, let's see if I can. try and keep the chat up as well. And if there's questions that pop up in the chat as we go along, we can try and answer those as we go, but for sure we'll have a um, have an opportunity to answer questions at the end. So those of you guys that are in the call right now, thank you so much. Great to have you here. Um, and good, it's gl glad to be able to do this evening. Uh, I think, um, I know for many eighth graders, um, one, they just wanna know more about what that high school experience is gonna be. And I also know that for, um, some families, they're making decisions right now as to whether or not uh, they want to keep their eighth graders at ISB or looking at other options, that kind of thing as well. So we're going to try and spend um, really the heart of tonight talking about the high school program and, and talking about it from, I think, from an academic uh, dimension. Um, I, like I said, uh, feel free to throw questions in the chat as we go. Uh, if they're relevant to what we're speaking about in the moment, we'll answer them. And then at the very end, we'll just have some time for additional questions. And you can post those either in the chat at the end or uh, on mic at the end and, and ask questions directly of us. Uh, for those of you um, that I haven't met before, I'm Andrew Guilford. I'm the uh, principal at ISB and uh, uh, been at a number of different high schools in different places over the years. This is my third year at ISB. And as I think most of you know, I absolutely love it here. It's just, I've found my home. And uh, hopefully here here until retirement, which is still some time away. Um, but good to see you all here and glad to have you here tonight. Kelly, do you want to introduce and then Tracy? Sure. Uh, hi, I'm Kelly Boardwell. I'm the assistant principal here at ISB. Uh, it's my 13th year as an administrator in the district and have worked in a couple different buildings, but... Uh, have the blessing of getting the experience to work with middle school and high school students at uh, ISB, which I really love. Um, and I'm Tracy Meilenberg. This is my 11th year at ISB. Um, so I've been here quite a while. I also have three kids, a sophomore, a freshman, and a seventh grader who go to ISB. So I'm all ISB all the time. And I'm a, I, I'm not sure I said I'm the uh, nine through 12 counselor for uh, last names M through Z. So any of you who uh, have been unfortunate enough to sit through uh, a presentation that I've given in the past uh, have know that I like to start my presentations with, with our school mission. And, um, and part of that is I think, at, I'll be honest with you, out of probably all the places I've worked um, through my career, I think ISB is probably um, one of the most mission-driven schools that I've been at. And we truly try to embody the values um, that are stated in that mission. And we want our students to graduate as a whole healthy human beings with an international lens, able to embrace intellectual rigor, um, uh, a degree of intercultural respect and a, a commitment to service um, throughout their lives. And uh, that with the hope of a larger mission of, of, of truly having an impact on the world. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about those kinds of things this evening and how ISB embodies that. Any of you that um, talked to your kids during culture week last week or came and joined us for international night, I'm sure you are well aware of those dimensions. Um, so we'll touch on those kinds of things briefly, but we're also going to spend, like I said, most of this evening kind of talking about the academic program for the high school. Um, Andrew's already kind of talked a little bit about last week's culture week. Um, what he didn't mention is a lot of that is also driven by our students. I think uh, one of our strengths as a school is the fact that students are so active. They're very connected to each other. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of celebration of sort of the unique experiences and backgrounds that kids come from. Um, we, we do spend a lot of time trying to build community 
uh, we have the benefit of having many kids come at sixth grade and stay all the way through. And with each class, because we're a six through 12 school, the class sizes are about a quarter of what a normal sort of high school grade level would be. So we get a chance to get to know them. They get a chance to get to know each other. And many of our teachers are teaching both uh, the nine, A910 nine, class as well as an IB class. So they're really uh, invested in making sure that kids get to that finish line at 12th grade and kind of know how to get them there. We talked a little bit about um, the international night and as some people may have attended. Um, we also have some other expressions through the year. And I think one of the things that we're most proud of is at the beginning of the week, we had students signed up for a fashion show on Friday. I think we had about 20. And by the end of the week, we were at 40. And I think that that really shows kind of the confidence that kids build in just being able to express uh, things that are important to them from their background. And kids really celebrate with each other for that. Um, and I think that really is infused throughout our classes. We do have uh, groups from other places that come to visit us. We had a group from Japan this year, sister school that came to visit us. Um, but we're constantly trying to infuse that, not only in these activities and events, but also into our classrooms as we work through content. Um, one of the things that uh, we want to mention is we are uh, currently at 100% graduation rate. Um, and I think that that has more significance when you think through, you know, we are pushing kids hard. Kids are in a college level program throughout their four years, um, sort of in preparation, especially in those final two years in the DP program. But because we're small, we also have supports in place to bring kids along the way. Um, I've worked in multiple buildings and I, I've never experienced a building that does more to support kids kind of where they are in that journey. Uh, our kids often feel very proud, very challenged and sometimes tired, but very proud of the work that they do uh, on our campus. So um, for students who are coming into high school, there's kind of two things that are happening, obviously ninth and 10th grade, we are wrapping up the middle years program or the MYP. And then in the 11th and 12th grade year, every single student is doing the diploma program. Um, some of that, the elements of grades nine and 10, um, obviously we have our core content classes, which um, by name on the transcript are really similar to the core content classes that you would see uh, across the comprehensive high schools and our other high schools outside of Beaverton School District. Um, we do require all students to continue study of a foreign of a world language, and that goes all the way through grade 12. Uh, all students take a, an elective in the arts. Um, one of the things that's unique about the MYP is the, the personal project. And in the 10th grade year, there's a, a half of year of a class that's, that's dedicated to that, in which students are, are given the opportunity to follow their passion um, on a topic and do kind of delve deep onto a personal project which culminates um, sometimes in a presentation, always in a reflection. And then we sort of honor those 10th graders as they've completed the MYP at the end of their 10th grade year. And those personal projects are all over the place. All sorts of things kids do from uh, a cookbook uh, to last year, we had a kid who built a, um, a bear proof food bag that he could take backpacking with him um, to students who actually do service projects um, with local community organizations, just a huge, um, huge array of things. And service, like it says in our mission, is a big part of that ninth and 10th grade year um, with different projects kids are doing and different requirements they have. Um, and then during that ninth and 10th grade year, they're finishing off their PE and health requirements. In the diploma program, you can see similar kinds of things. That there's classes that they're taking, obviously your content classes, and we're going to go through those in a little bit more detail later on. Uh, all juniors and seniors as part of the IB diploma take the class called Theory of Knowledge which is a class that is about um, how we gain knowledge, what we do with that knowledge, what are the different kinds of knowledge, um, and sort of an application of, um, um, of epistemology, of the study of knowledge across different disciplines. And then at the uh, junior and senior level, students have to continue to engage in service and also activity uh, through what we call CAS projects, creativity, activity, and service. 
And then all of uh, the juniors, you know, starting the end of junior year into senior year, complete an extended essay, which is a 4,000 word uh, independent research project. Uh, students just found, our juniors today, just found out who their extended essay advisors are going to be. It's teachers across the school, almost the entire school. Almost all teachers act as an advisor. Uh, Tracy and Kelly and myself are all advisors. And it was funny, as I walked out to the buses, uh, the juniors were all on their phones as they had just gotten the message to who their advisor were. And they were ex ex exclaiming with joy. It was the strangest thing to say, oh my gosh, here's my advisor, person that's going to work with me on a 4,000 word essay. But I think that speaks to kind of the spirit of our kids and speaks to the level of commitment that they have and need to have um, in order to be able to be successful during those, especially during that DP program, especially during that 11th and 12th grade year. So many of you have seen these models before that relate to sort of putting the whole picture together for both the MYP, the middle years program and the IB diploma program. I'm not gonna go through the details of what's on here, but really the, the message behind this is um, the International Baccalaureate is a program. It's a system um, with approaches to teaching. So certain teaching strategies teachers are using um, with, with integration between content areas, with ongoing language study and certain areas of content that they have to have, uh, all really to hopefully have students arrive at international mindedness. So when we're doing the IB program, while it is a whole slew of college level classes that we'll talk about later on, um, those classes that they're taking and the extra activities they're doing kind of all tied together into this thing that we call the International Baccalaureate. All right, I love this slide. I went over it with the eighth grade. Um eighth graders today when we went into uh, classrooms. Um, and I like to just tell a little bit of a history about the International Baccalaureate Program. It was actually created in international schools overseas by some teachers in the 70s who were noticing that um, kids were transferring schools and there might not be um, a, a cohesive curriculum that they were transferring to. So they decided to develop a, a curriculum that was um, college preparatory uh, and because most of the students were going to college and they really, like Andrew just said, they really wanted it to be a full program. Um, and so that's the main difference between AP and IB. So, um, our, we have, uh, other IB schools, uh, throughout the district, um, but uh, we really focus at ISB on the full international baccalaureate program. Um, and they, there's a whole, um, the learner profile where we are really trying to build um, those those traits in students along the way um, through all of our classes. And that's kind of the things that interconnects the classes um, and, and really trying to do some cross-curricular um, um, activities and lessons and things like that. AP was created by the College Board, um, which is um, who um, who founded and runs the SAT exam. Um, it is also college preparatory. Um, but one of the main differences is um, the way that the exams are given. Um, so IB has several um, several components of the final exam grade. Um, so there's internal access assessments and external assessments, whereas AP has um, just one exam in May, it's usually multiple choice, not a written exam. Um, although I don't, some of them might have some components of writing, but I think it's primarily multiple choice. Um, and um, IB, um, I think, I mean, I, I think overseas schools tend to know a little bit about advanced placement, but many overseas schools are very familiar with the international baccalaureate. They kind of compare it to A levels and in, in uh, like they would in um, England, uh, in the UK. Um, okay, we can go to the next one. So there are other IB schools in the Beaverton School District, like I mentioned. There's Sunset Mountainside, um, Sunset Mountainside, Southridge, all offer the IB program. Um, but what makes uh, ISB different is a few things. Um, one, all of our students are in the International Baccalaureate program. And we, even though at the end of the day, not 100% of our students test in all of the classes, um, they are in all IB classes throughout the time that they are in, at, in ISB. And we really are founded on the core values of the IB program. And we 
promote those every day through everything that we do. That's part of the lens. Um, whereas a comprehensive high school, they're doing lots of things. They have career technical education. Some students are doing that. Some students are, you know, into art classes or, um, you know, there are lots of different levels of classes. Um, and at the end of the day, most of the um, comprehensive high schools only have a handful of students um, a little bit more than a handful, um, but usually 30 to 40 students who are doing the full international baccalaureate program. Um, most students are are taking just a class here and there um, in the IB program or in the AP classes. Um, and mo so um, and the only other school that has MYP, the middle years program, is Mountainside, I believe Mountainside has it, has it, but I'll be no other school has the middle years program in ninth and tenth grade. So we want to spend a little bit of time just sort of sharing with you about the high school curriculum, specific courses, course pathways, that kind of thing. Um, Tracy, this is still you, right? I remember right. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So um, uh, always our focus. Also, especially for the school counselors, is making sure that students are on track at graduation. So we just kind of wanted to wanted to tell a little bit about just the the graduation requirements versus what we offer at IB at IS at ISB. So, um, in order to graduate from high school, you need four years of English, three years of science, three years of uh, math, three years of social studies, a PE health. Um, and some arts or world language. Um, and so you can get those at any of the high schools. At ISB, um, students usually take four years in almost everything. Um, so they take four years of English, four years of their world language. Many of our students end up with a um, diploma by liter literacy, which means that they have, have a, a pretty high level of fluency in, in um, Japanese, Ch uh, Chinese, or, um, or Spanish. Uh, and um, all the other languages we, we, or all the other subject areas, we, most students take four years of all of those or all of our students do not most. <laughs> um, so this is our English curriculum. So they do the, this would be the same, the ninth and 10th is what they would take at any high school, uh, literature and composition, although ours is through the MYP lens. Um, and then they go into higher level, uh, language and literature, um, with an extended study class to make sure that they um, that they get everything that they need to be prepared for the exams at the end. And that's a two-year course. All of the diploma program uh, courses are both junior and senior year. So what we call group two are the world languages. Like we mentioned, um, all students take a world language every year, all through high school. And what's, a though, what's great about the IB program, though, for world language is you can still get an IB diploma no matter really where you enter in that world language um, track. So even if you are a middle school student who has never taken a world language before, or you've taken, maybe you've taken uh, Chinese the last two years, and now you're deciding you're heading into high school and you want to switch, you want to do Spanish instead. Even if you start at level one in the ninth grade, you can still make it to the full IB diploma. Um, so really anywhere in ninth grade levels one through four, 10th grade, you can be in levels two through five. And that 11th and 12th grade is when you are fitting into the IB world language courses. And we offer those at three different levels, uh, what we call higher level, um, which would be more advanced. So you'd probably be in level five at 10th grade, um, or standard level, which would probably be either in level three or level four in 10th grade. And then ab initio, and so those would be the students we would be starting that in grade nine at level one. They'd probably be in ab initio when they got to uh, grade 11. Um, so, but all students are able to, in those three uh, languages you see on there, Japanese, Mandarin, or Spanish, make their way through the IB program. Now, I recognize we have many, many students who are um, have a high degree of literacy or are fluent or are bilingual in languages beyond these three languages. And so at grade 11 and 12, students can choose if they want to uh, to do what we call self-taught in that language. And so that's another language that you might have from a home language or somewhere else in which you have a high degree of literacy and you actually take a course kind of through independent study, but with some help of some tutors um, in developing and continue to develop your language skills in those at that area. So, for example, we have students this year that are doing self-taught in Arabic, uh, German. I think we have Russian, maybe a few others as well. Um, the difference is with the self-taught or one of the differences with the self-taught, it's essentially like taking what would be comparable to another English class. 
So it's not so much language for acquisition, but instead you'd be reading novels in that uh, self-taught language. You'd be writing essays in that self-taught language. Um, similar, so similar to like uh, what we would think of as a typical English class in, in our school systems, but being done in another language. Every once in a while, we also have students who decide to double up. So I've been taking Japanese ever since seventh grade. I love Japanese. I want to do IB Japanese. And I've got this uh, by, by literacy already in Arabic. And so I'm going to do self-taught Arabic as well. And so there's options for some students to even to be you know, graduating from ISB triliterate um, and with a triliterate diploma. So there's, there's a lot of different kind of pathways you can take uh, with languages um, at ISB, but all four years is a, is a critical part of it. Um, are, we actually, I believe, Andrew, were over 75% last year for a uh, seal of biliteracy. Yeah, Graduates so from our school were at least biliterate at 75% or greater. So. so the seal of biliteracy is uh, an honor that's bestowed upon students from the state of Oregon, who, when students have demonstrated through a variety of means, the fact that they are uh, literate in more than just English and multiple languages. Uh, and like Kelly said, about 75 of our students earn the seal of biliteracy. Um, so this is um, some information about group three individuals and societies. Uh, for most of us older folks, that was social studies. Um, and uh, there have been a few changes, sort of state and Beaverton School District changes. Um, U.S. history will now kind of be at that ninth grade level. It used to be a little bit later in the high school sequence. Uh, but it will be U.S. history at grade nine. Civics and government now are uh, new courses that are uh, coming online for that sophomore year. And then our students are in a higher level um, history of Asia in grade 11 uh, and 12, although they also take um, an extra course also in the senior year that is a is a topics class as well. Um, uh, if students love social studies, which I was one of those, uh, they also have an option in group six in their elective realm to take some additional social studies. And many of our students take more social studies than um, in many of the other high schools because they have access to uh, global politics for a two-year sequence as an IB year one, year two, uh, or psychology. Um, and both of those uh, are considered social studies classes in our particular program, um, they're in addition to our regular course of study. Uh, experimental sciences, um, very similar in the in the ninth and 10th grade to um, some of the other uh, comprehensive schools. At grade 11 though, every student is in a higher level biology uh, in grade 11 and in grade 12, as part of our DP program. Some students who love science, and we know we have a lot of kids that are interested in STEM fields or intend to use science in some way in careers in the future, also have a group six choice for um, chemistry SL, both in the, uh, it's a two year sequence as well uh, in 11th grade and in 12th grade. And many students are doubling up. And we didn't put it on this screen, but there was a question earlier about it. And so I'll, I'll mention it now. And it comes up a little bit later on. At the ninth grade level, we also have a class called Advanced Science Research. And oh, it's usually yeah. about 30 students or so that uh, kind of double up on science and do, uh, uh, I guess, what I would call an inquiry-based class, an investigation-based class uh, during their ninth grade year as well. Uh, students who aren't taking Advanced Science Research have IB Seminar. Uh, which is sort of a structured study hall class that we have in place to support students as they really begin um, the rigorous high school high school courses they're going to have. So some take advanced science research. Uh, the vast majority end up doing IB seminar during ninth grade. That's me. I almost I almost uh, didn't didn't get there. <laughs> um, so uh, this is um, our math um, pathways. So uh, in ninth grade students, you can see it kind of goes um, uh, from top to bottom. So if a student starts out in AGS one, they go to AGS two in tenth grade, uh, and then they have two choices for math classes. And I'll go over those in just a second uh, for the eleventh and twelfth grade. Um, 
uh, pl- d- diploma program. Um, same thing with AGS two; they go to AGS three. Um, that was that's where the path to pathway two is where most of our students are. Um, AGS two, AGS three, and then they they also have a choice. Um, and then our third pathway is the um, pathway to higher level IB higher level math. Um, which is kind of a differential calculus course. Uh, and that is AGS three, then pre-calculus, um, then um, the HL course. Um, <clears throat> Andrew, we go to the next slide. Um, so we we have two different um, math courses for most students. And even a student in, a, in the higher level math uh, course could go and choose to take either of these two, depending on what their post-secondary plans uh, uh, are. Um, but we have IB mathematics analysis and approaches. Um, that's a little bit more math math for students who are going into engineering, physical science, and some economics. And then we have math, math applications and interpretations. Um, and this is more for students that are that want to that plan on studying social sciences, natural sciences, medicine, statistics, business, and even engineering in that case. Although if you if hardcore engineering, I probably would say to stick to the um analysis as, and approaches. The math applications and interpretations has a little bit more statistics. Um, and if you're really interested, I can I can send you a chart that has what <laughs> what types of uh, math each class has in it. Well, I'll answer quickly, just a couple of questions that were in the chat that relate to math. We do have a small number of students who come into ninth grade already having completed AGS-3. And what we do with those students actually is their ninth grade year, we have them take AP statistics um, through Flex Online, and then 10th grade year, they would go into pre-calculus. And we do it that order because our higher level math teacher also teaches the pre-calculus. And so she gears her pre-calculus class so students are ready for um, and feed directly into that IB HL math um, that she does during the 11th and 12th grade year. So, and there's usually a handful every year that are that are doing the Flex Online during ninth grade with the AP stats. Um, and then that way they have pre-calc after that during their during their 10th grade year. Um, I also, I just see an, um, could the AGS3 summer camp program allow for pre-calculus in ninth grade? Um, we, t- we typically wouldn't recommend that because we, that a student who's going into AGS3 in ninth grade already has, uh, is on the highest level that we offer. Um, so, uh, so technically you could do it, but it wouldn't be recommended. I think it's important to, uh, I think uh, some of the math there, it's very application oriented. It's, it's making relationships to global focus. It's about using math, not just understanding formula and being able to get to compu- computated answers. And so I think having some process for that, understanding what's going to be asked at the end of that uh, DP program in math. There are a lot of skills that go along with not only knowing the math that are really important along those steps. Kelly, you um, want to- all right. Oh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. So I, think, arts and, yeah. I think I'm arts and electives. So <laughs> these, these, are the, these are the things that um, bring us joy, right? I mean, math brings a lot of people joy. But personally, I'm an arts and arts and electives gal. Um, so these are the electives that we have at uh, at ISB. So students can continue with with uh, band, concert choir, um, art one, art two. Uh, many of your students uh, who are in the art path have taken art one or art two this year. So they would go into sculpture and digital art next year. Um, we're offering a brand new course, digital filmmaking this year. I'll go over that on the next slide. Um, and then they, when they get into 11th and 12th grade, they can can, uh, can choose to continue with the arts or music, or they can take um, an additional science. They can take chemistry, psychology, or uh, another social studies, global politics. Um, so digital filmmaking is our new class. We're super excited about it. 
um, and students will have um, explore different how film um, shows up in society, how it how it uh, um, shapes culture and politics and things like that. And they also will uh, get to produce films and learn about filmmaking. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I think, is this still me? Yeah, uh, okay. actually, I think it's me. Uh, okay. Oh, <laughs> either way, either way. Um, so there are some other courses that are offered. Um, you can kind of see their range of grades there. Health and PE are primarily in the ninth and 10th grade, like they are at the comprehensive schools. We do offer AVID, um, and I'm going to talk about AVID a little bit more in a second, Um uh, as Andrew had mentioned, the advanced science research class for students focused wanting to have a sort of a second science uh, course in the ninth grade, IB seminar, which does a lot of support for students kind of in our programs in 9, 10, 11, um, teachers that are supporting them in a lot of the different aspects of the MYP program and in that transition to DP. Theory of knowledge, we had already talked about that a little bit uh, earlier. Learning strats, um, we do have students um, that are on IEPs and receive learning strats on our campus, um, as well as English language um, development support. Um, we have courses for that also on our campus. Um, AVID, um, I'm not sure um, how much everyone knows about AVID. I think AVID looks different, a little bit different in our building. Um, traditionally, it was sort of historically started for students that were sort of like, had academic potential to be college bound, maybe didn't have that history in their family or background. So the idea was to equip them with sort of uh, uh, opportunities to experience college and career related activities, to learn some skills, to sort of prep them for college. And what came out of that were lots of great strategies that help kids be more organized, be able to take excellent notes. My own uh, student who's now a sophomore in college actually was an avid for, I think, four years. Uh, he writes notes way better than I do. Like there are th strategies that came from his experience that that are just great for kids to prepare them for those upper level courses and to be able to work collaboratively in groups. If you are, if your student is interested, um, having them or yourself email a counselor to inquire about that, there are definitely students that really find community in that environment. Usually, the kids stay together uh, through multiple years. And actually, Kelly, um, if I can yeah. just interject, there Absolutely. is on the on the forecasting forum, there is a place where you can indicate you're interested in in AVID and it will send you, you enter your email address and it will automatically send you more information on yeah. how it works and the application. And it would be, you know, for some students, it'll be elective and for others, it may take the place of something else kind of depends on the grade level as they travel through. Um, we have other academic supports, and I I can honestly say, you know, I mean, I think we push kids hard, and they feel a lot of pride in the work that they're doing. We also have a lot of support for kids. Um, I I cannot speak highly enough about the way teachers approach helping kids have multiple opportunities, making sure that if kids need some more support after school or during access tutorial. We have tutoring available uh, during access tutorial in the um, library uh, with tutors there to help kids. We have people staying after school to support kids. Um, there is a sense in our building that there are kids from the time they hit their hit our door to the time they leave us and that comes out in the work that we do with kids, having a grad coach, having a ninth grade success team, all of those things sort of wrap kids up and make sure that they're making progress. And uh, I, I've been, this is my second year at ISB and I cannot tell you how impressed I've been. And I think we also kind of build it into the programs themselves. I mean, through the Absolutely. IB seminar classes, like it says on here, but also yeah. each of the higher level classes at the DP level has that extra quarter 
Um, so to give those students more time to um, be able to go as deep as they need to on those diploma level classes. So the biology and the history and the English all get an extra quarter um, during their junior year uh, of class. So I, I, I am not gonna read through all these colleges on here, but I put these on here. Um, this is all the colleges students at ISB have attended um, since our first graduating class. Um, and you know the list goes on and on, and you're going to see sort of a huge, huge range of things in here. Some that are close by, some that are far away, uh, some that are overseas. And um, really, my point, my point being that students who are graduating from ISB are heading off to a huge variety of places. Uh, we have many students who end up going to highly selective private and public universities. Obviously, a lot of students go to state universities, whether that's in Oregon or outside of Oregon, uh, private small liberal arts colleges. Um, and we have students who go to specialty schools. Students who are interested in art and design and end up at those kinds of schools or technical programs such as nursing. Uh, we always have a handful of students that start out their time at community colleges after ISB, uh, music conservatories. So really, um, a lot of it's going to depend on the student themselves, on where their interests are at, what kind of experience they want to have in college. And we have um, an amazing, amazing set of counselors, uh, one of whom is on this call right now, uh, who work with students one on one because of our small size and because we know our students really well. It's almost like you get your own personal college coach um, to kind of work, walk your student through that process um, dur during, you know, beginning really uh, well, some information beginning sophomore year, but then kind of ramping up junior year and obviously support in senior year when those applications happen. One of the most amazing statistics about our ISB graduates is that they have a return rate to college of 95% or right around 95%. What that means is that they go off from ISB, they go off to their college for that first year, and then about 95% of them return to college for that second year, uh, which is way above the national average. Um, so our students are go off to schools well-prepared and feeling confident in what they do. Um, somebody asked earlier in the chat about college credits. Uh, they mentioned AP because of the exams on AP, you can earn college credits. That's also true for IB. Um, we have, you know, our students are taking, if they're doing the full diploma, which most of them do, are taking six different exams. And most of those exams can um, result in university credit. All of that, and this is true whether it's AP or IB, all of that is school dependent. So what OSU will accept for IB exam results and which college credits they award is going to be different from uh, what University of Washington will accept, which is going to be different from what Dartmouth will accept. And so each school kind of has its own set of courses they'll accept um, and grant credits to, and based upon their own programs and based upon probably the level of selectivity as well. We have, I would say, the vast majority of our students go off to college with a significant amount of college credits. Um, often students are going in with sophomore status um, to the colleges that they are attending based upon the results in their IB exams. Or if not sophomore status, they have satisfied whatever prerequisite requirements would be there for intro level classes. Um, and so our students, you know, addition, addition to winning a lot of scholarships, which many of our students do, um, the actual credits they earn from those IB exams um, are paying off in terms of what they're taking for classes in college and um, sort of a shorter shorter college time because of the amount of credits that they go in with. Um, and we see that for almost every single one of our kids um, when they graduate from ISB are taking credits with them because of how they do on, on those IB exams. And like I said on here, kids are going off to all sorts of different places. And this next slide our students have all sorts of different majors. I've had a couple of parents ask me recently, so what, what kinds of majors does ISB prepare a student for? And I put these careers up here because the truth is a very broad um, skill-based education like the IB program is gonna give is gonna set them up for almost any field they wanna go into. Uh, of course, we have a very large number of students who go into STEM fields, uh, but we have students who go into social sciences um, and into the humanities. 
Uh, I purposely put on there the kangaroo farmer who graduated from ISB some years ago and now is farming kangaroos, I think up in Canada. Uh, students go a variety of directions. And the truth is they're leaving us with the skills to do the things that are going to bring them joy in life and gonna allow them to contribute to, uh, to the world in the way that we, they, they want to. We have a um, one of our staff members is sort of developing a, uh, an alumni network and we're constantly hearing from our alumni and they're talking about how much they value uh, their time at ISB and what it meant for them and what it meant for them after ISB uh, once they left. Okay, um, so uh, we want to talk a little bit about co-curricular activities. We have, Kelly, What was what's the number you told me today? 58? 50, 50, I think we're at 52 this year. Okay, we have yeah. 52 different clubs and activities at ISB that is very, very student driven. If a student wants to start a club, then by golly, they can start a club. <laughs> <laughs> they just have to go through a, um, a process and, and, uh, but we have lots of different opportunities, uh, for students to join clubs and to have leadership opportunities within, uh, those clubs. And, um, yeah, so it's, it, it, our students are very active and involved. Go to the next slide. Is, these are just some fun things we do. We have spirit days. We have dances, just like you would at a, at the comprehensive high schools. Um, we have coffee houses, which um, which have looked differently over the years, but those are kind of like fun right after school activities that are they used to be kind of um, talent show type things, and and more recently they've been more like. Um, something that's in mainstream culture. We try to replicate <laughs> it at ISB. Um, oops, oh, AirPod fell out. Um, so uh, we have lots of students, many students who participate in uh, clubs and athletics and activities at their home high school. And we encourage our students to do that. Um, my own daughter is uh, at ISB as a 10th grader. She's doing um, theater at, at um, Sunset High School and is having a wonderful time with that and has created a whole uh, set of friends outside of, outside of ISB. Um, so that's been really wonderful for her. Um, and, uh, we have lots of students on the sports teams at their home high school. Many of them end up being captains of the team and all that kind of stuff, even though they don't go to school with, um, the students. I think at our, at our awards ceremony in June last year, uh, when they were giving out the health PE award, that department was giving out their award. Uh, the PE teacher asked, uh, students to stand who had played a high school varsity sport and about a third of our students stood up. So, which just amazed me. I didn't realize that the number was so high. Uh, so many, many of our students are connecting with those programs at their comprehensive high school and, and engaging in them. Um, oh, so uh, before I, I talk about, you can keep it on this slide, but um, someone asked, when did these clubs happen after school? Will buses drop them home? Um, so they they typically do happen after school. Um, there is not, there's only um, bus transportation home right after school. Um, so students have to find their own way home if they stay for a club. And then as far as the activities go, that's when at the home high schools, that's one of that's the reason that our buses go from ISB to the home high school so that students can they get there right as um, Sunset or Westview or Mountainside is getting out and then they can do they can go to their practices or games or things like that. Um, we wanted to put a uh, just a little information about how clubs and activities work at the home high school. I have found in my own personal experience, the best way to find information, unfortunately, um, depending on how you feel about social media, is to follow um, whatever team or sport or club that you're interested in, um, really specifically on Instagram. Um, they do a lot of advertising there uh, about the when, when tryouts are, when the auditions are, or things like that. Um, but you can also search the home high school's webpage for the contact information for the for the coach or the club leader. Um, contact the high school athletic director if you can't find the Oh, Tracy, you froze for me. I'm not sure if you're frozen for other folks as well. Yeah, I think Tracy was saying if you can't find information on head coaches, um, reaching out to the athletic director 
at um, your home high school, they can usually give you that contact information. For eighth graders, often workouts, um, there'll be some summer workouts going uh, through in the spring and early summer. So if you reach out kind of in the springtime, you may find out about summer activities that are going on. But we have a lot of kids actually, uh, I'll be going to a game next week and expect I'll be seeing lots of uh, our kids uh, actually competing against each other, which is pretty fun when they know each other so well. So definitely, and probably if, if you have a student who's going to be staying at ISB next year and you know they're going to be playing sports at their home high school, the sooner you connect with that school, the better. You know, athletic yeah, director absolutely. that's there and um, you want to make that happen as soon as you can. Uh, I'm not sure, Kelly, if this is you or me, but I'll do uh, it. Biggest uh, news, 815 okay. next year. That is so fantastic. <laughs> um, hopefully nobody will be standing on the sidewalk at 545 in the morning waiting for a bus, um, which is great. Um, and if you notice, you know, so our school day gets, gets done at three o'clock, comprehensive high schools release at 330, which means that for our students who are engaged in activities at the comprehensive high schools, uh, there's ample time to get over there and be able to get set up for practices, activities, you know, whatever, uh, show rehearsals, those kinds of things. Uh, from what I have heard next year, the transportation pattern um, will remain the same, at least as of this moment right now. Um, so in the morning, there'll be a hub. So students get on the bus in the morning, take that bus to a hub, and then the transfers from the hub um, to whatever school they're going to. ISB is a hub. So I know some students actually can take the bus straight to ISB. Some students have to change at either base or uh, ACMA and then take the bus from there over to ISB, depending where, we, where you live. Uh, students, we allow students to drive and park at school once they have a license. Um, and so we have some of our sophomores right now who are beginning to drive drive to school at this point. We just ask that you register in the main office in case something happens with your car. We're able to locate who you are. And then um, even though those are the school hours, 8.15 to 3 o'clock, by the time you get to senior year, there's actually some release periods. Uh, right now, most of our seniors have either a late start where they're not starting until the second period of the day or have an early release where they're getting out, getting out one period earlier. Um, ironically, most of those, even though they have a late start or early release, we find that they're still at school and we see them hanging out together in study groups <laughs> uh, in the cafeteria or in the wellness center or at some of the tables just in C-Hall. Um, our kids kind of still come and connect with each other as they're going through that IB diploma, diploma program together. Um, we had a few um, questions in the chat. Jenny asked a question specific to a, um, taking AP tests. Um, other than the online flex AP stats, um, we, we don't offer or proctor any AP exams, um, because the IB, the DP program are, is a, is a college, um, uh, entrance type exam. And so that's our version of that. I mean, students, technically students are allowed to take AP exams, even without taking the AP course. Um, the only one we proctor at ISB is the AP statistics exam, and that's only for those students um, who are taking the AP stats online. Um, other than that, um, students, students are taking them on their own elsewhere. You know, that that's that's what they're doing. But uh, the IB exams uh, happen all during the spring of senior year. Uh, what is the maximum number of clubs a student can join in ninth grade? There's no limit. We don't put a limit on it, but you spread yourself too thin. You're not really enjoying any of them. Uh, actually, um, colleges sometimes raise an eyebrow when are not, not quite as accepting of like, oh my gosh, this kid's got 50 different clubs. Well, is that real? Do they really give everything to 50 different clubs? Often schools want to see a passion. And so it might be better for you to sort of find the two or three things that you really love and really want to spend your time with. Actually, there's only on the, on the common application, which is how most people apply to college, uh, there's only space for. 10, I think 10, uh, activities total. So that's not, that's including sports and clubs and everything. So, uh, there's a question about honor society cords. We, uh, have cords for several things. Um, honor, the honor society, I believe is one of them. Is that true, Andrew? Yep. Yeah, honor societies are the, are the groups that get cords. There's a couple other ways that we distinguish students at graduation. Actually, the full IB diploma candidates uh, wear a stole. The avid students get a stole. Um, but mostly the cords themselves are for students who are part of the honor societies. 
Um, there's a question regarding if a student were to go to Sunset, um, would they get a diploma? Um, I'm, I'm assuming they're talking about the IB diploma. It would depend on if they were taking courses um, and and would test for the full diploma. Is that yeah? Yeah. What we're so so all all students, regardless of what high school you go to, regardless of whether you stay at ISB or not, you're going to get a diploma for graduation. You're going to get a BSD diploma, whether or not you do the IB program or not. If you are at ISB, you are also doing the full international baccalaureate. Um, and so you would get an IB diploma. Now, what happens is sometimes some students, although it's a, kind of a small number, some students don't do the full IB diploma. They're still graduating from high school. They're still going off to college. They still have all the requirements they need for those things. But we call those students course candidates in which the courses they uh, achieve a certain level at, they, get a, they take the exam for, they get a certificate for. And what we see at most of the comprehensive high schools that offer IB the vast majority of students are course candidates. They're not diploma students. They're still graduating high school. They're still getting a BSD diploma, but they've pick and chosen the IB courses they want to take as opposed to doing the full requirements of the IB diploma. Um, and so that's the difference for that. So when we say course candidates, yes, they're still graduating. They're still getting a Beaverton School District diploma. They're just not getting an IB diploma. Uh, Fatima asked a question related to uh, after school activities. Um, we have a fair, a club fair that all high school students attend, usually in the fall, just so that you can find out. Um, it's actually a, quite a large event in our building. Um, you can find out about a lot of uh, different clubs. You can also um, apply to have a club that if there isn't a club there you're interested in, there's an application in the main office for um, starting a club that you're interested in as well. I often send out information through the student canvas page. So there are a lot of opportunities to find out when clubs are meeting and to go check them out. Tracy, can you talk a little about sort of the, there's a question there about GPA and connection with GPA and college admissions, calculating GPA, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So um, let me, um, so yes, ISB does report GPA and, um, and we send their transcript. All it's, our transcript, the same, what we send is the same any high school would send. Um, it's a list of the classes that the student took and the grades that they received in those classes. Um, and we do differentiate. So actually both the weighted and unweighted weighted GPA are on the transcript. So the unweighted GPA is just all of every, all A's count for four or count for four points. All B's count for three points. Doesn't matter if it was AP, uh, IB or a um, regular level class there, are, it's all unweighted. Um, a weighted gives an extra bonus point to um, uh, classes that are, are deemed harder for, for like more rigorous for lack of a better word. Um, and so all the IB classes are considered uh, weighted classes at the schools that offer AP. Those one, those would also be weighted classes. And, and those are A's are worth five points. B's are worth four points. Um, C's are worth three points. So there's an extra bonus point, but on the transcript, it has both weighted and unweighted GPA. Um, but most colleges are not just going to look at the GPA and let you in without looking at the whole transcript. That's really, um, it's a little bit misleading that we do that. Like most colleges are going to look at your full transcript, see what classes that you took, what grades you got in those classes, see that those classes are, are IB classes. Um, and while we do um, share both weighted and unweighted GPA, we actually don't do a class ranking system. Um, the only exception to that is if there's a question from a specific university who requires class ranking and or a scholarship committee who wants to know class ranking. But those are not on the transcripts um, and aren't really part of our um, what we're sending off to colleges. And that's true. That's a Beaverton School District policy, not just an ISB policy. We don't rank. And and that 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 movement was actually led by ISB because there's such a little difference between our very top student and our number 30 student. Um, you know, our students do really, really well in school for the most part. We have a question related to drop off. Um, right now with our 720 start time, 
we um, actually open our building at 635 in the morning because we know some kids are coming. You know, the parents are sort of trying to avoid putting them on the bus a little bit earlier. So we do open up um, the school fairly early. I'm not sure we haven't really set a time for next year yet, but there, because we'll likely still be a hub, there will probably be some time before the regular start time that kids are coming in and eating breakfast and studying and, and hanging out. Uh, Tracy, are all, can you remind me, are all the IB courses, whether it's SL or HL or all those weighted classes? Yeah, they're weighted and they're weighted the same. So there's no differentiate, differentiation between an SL and an HL. And that's true, again, at our school. And the, it's actually the district who that determines which classes are weighted and unweighted. So for us at ISB, the weighted classes are advanced science, advanced science research, uh, which is the only weighted class you can take in ninth grade. Um, and then all the IB courses that they take in 11th and 12th grade. Um, but at, at a home high school, it would be AP classes, IB classes, some of the um, uh, dual credit, the dual credit classes, things like that would might be um, might be weighted. I don't none of the none of the comprehensives will allow kids to access the IB until 11th grade, though. Is that correct? That's true. Yes. School. Yeah. It, that's an IB policy. You can't take right. um, I, IB diploma program classes until 11th and 12th grade. There's a question about after school clubs. Most of our clubs run about an hour after school. So they go, they maybe a little bit more than that. They start around 2.15 and finish around 3.15. Um, a few might go till around 3.30. But for the most part, we're saying around 215 to 315 that will probably move up uh, next year clearly for uh, the little bit later release time uh, there's a question about language placement into ninth grade uh, generally what happens is you are just going into the next level class from your eighth grade class so if you did spanish one in seventh grade spanish two in eighth grade you would do spanish three in ninth grade um, the few exceptions I can think of is if, is if you really struggled in Spanish 2 and we felt like it was a better to have you repeat Spanish 2 to be ready for the upper level classes, you might repeat. Um, some students do take language classes outside of school and try to jump ahead a year. We've seen mixed results with that because one, one of the amazing things about ISB, which I've just, it, it, it boggles me every time I think about it and see it in action, because we're a small school and because this program has been in place for a while, our teachers are really well aligned grade six through grade 12. And so our Spanish two teacher knows what's happening in Spanish three and is designing that class to ensure that those kids are ready for the next level. You go to PCC for the summer and you take a random Spanish two class. It may or may not have everything that you need um, in order to be able to be ready for the next level. So something, something just to keep in mind. Um, most of our world language students at the 11th and 12th grade level are taking that language at the SL standard level, as opposed to higher level, not across the board. We have higher level in all three languages, but most are at standard level. And the reason for that is for the IB diploma, it is recommended that you only do three higher level classes and your remaining classes are at the standard level. Some students opt into doing four higher level classes. Um, but when you go to do those final exams, you can't test in any more than four. So students are picking and choosing to a certain degree which classes they're going to take at the standard level and which classes they're going to take at the higher level. English, biology, and history are all taught at the higher level, regardless of what you sign up for. And so the kids already have three higher level classes. Some kids also do higher level math. Some kids also do higher level world language. Um, but you're only able to test at the end of your senior year in four, a maximum of four, but most students do three uh, higher level classes. Um, I don't know 100%. Um, I know that the ISEF is the International um, Science Fair. I think technically through advanced through what they do in advanced science research, they could get to that level, I think. Do you know we, that for sure? We have, Either? we have, yeah. I, I'm not sure which specific national science fair, international science fair it is, if it's within that same realm or not, but I know we have ninth graders every year that are participating in, in competitive science fairs. We also have 10th, 11th, and 12th graders that do as well. It's not embedded in a class. Often those students are working outside of school and coordinating with the teacher here at school to make it happen. 
But um, I remember two years ago, we had a number of students that placed nationally, um, some of our older students, juniors who placed nationally on those international science fairs. Um, and so, yep, kids continue to do that through high school. I think, have we gotten to all of them? I'm not sure. I think there, was a, there was one, uh, there's somebody who was just asking for information about the possibility of switching schools. Um, I would have, um, I would just recommend that student reach out to counselor that, and actually there'll be some information on the forecasting as well, where you can communicate what you're thinking. Um, but reaching out to your counselor is also a great step in that. Um, we don't have any, any sports at ISB that the only way to do sports is through your home high school. And like we said, we had lots of students who do that. We do have some cross country and track, but that's at the middle school level through, um, THPRD. Um, we do uh, have very, we do have very competitive ping pong at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, um, and there, there is a chess club that meets after school. I think it's primarily, um, middle school. I know we do have some some kids that have a volleyball club and I don't know if some of those kids are starting to kind of try to connect with other high school groups, but, um, if, you know, we, we don't really have a high school gym, we have, uh, a, a PE facilities. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we have, um, we don't, I don't know if we have science bowl, but we do have Japan bowl. Um, miss, uh, miss West, our J Japanese teacher takes students to, um, the Japan Bowl at Willamette University every year, and they they place really well. So, um, yeah, there are some different competitions a little bit. Yeah. Anything that is an OSAA activity, students can do at their home high school, at the comprehensive high schools. And so that's why it's not just sports, but students are doing drama and theater and orchestra, other kinds of things as well. So if it's an OSA, OSAA uh, sponsored activity, then kids can do that at their comprehensive high school. Did we get, if we missed your question and uh, yeah. you can put it in the, <laughs> in, in the bottom, because I, I lost all of yeah. mine when my computer you know, cut and, out. <laughs> you know, and you know where to find us. Um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions additional questions. Yeah. Where, where can we find this recording? Thanks for asking that. Uh, so we'll go ahead. I will mail out uh, the YouTube link to the recording to all eighth grade families, as well as a copy of the slideshow. Um, and I'll try and get that done tomorrow. So you should see that pretty shortly. Um, I know we have some families who couldn't make it tonight, unfortunately, because we scheduled at the same time that Sunset High School, I think, has its curriculum night, too. Um, so we'll want to make sure everybody gets that. But honestly, don't hesitate to reach out. We want you, if you're trying to make a decision about next year, we want you to be able to make the best decision possible for you and your family. And um, we we'll, are willing to talk that through with you and answer anything addition, additional that you want to know about. Um, we have one question that I think we missed, which was, what is the purpose of an honor society? So the honor societies, um, they usually, uh, they, they are in specific areas. So there's national honor society, which is just for students who have, a, I believe, a 3.5 GPA after sophomore year, second semester, sophomore year, they get invited to join national honor society. And um, there are some, there's a community service component to that. There's some leadership opportunities. Um, and, uh, and then each of the languages have an honor society. So they do things around, they have activities around that specific language. Um, there's a social studies one, uh, and you can put it on your college application, especially if you take leadership opportunities in there and you do get a cord at, gra at graduation if you do, if you fulfill all the requirements, but really it's an opportunity to just dive more deeply into something that you enjoy and excel at. Um, and, and, um, so that's kind of the purpose. I think our honor societies drive a lot of activities, student, um, activities in our building that they generate and run and show a lot of leadership for. And, uh, I, Harsun, I see there's a the question in there about the difference between IB and AP. Uh, we went over that earlier. We'll share that in the slideshow. Feel free to swing by the main office, talk to the counselor, talk to one of us about that um, tomorrow as well. 
Thank you all so much. Just really appreciate you coming. Um, great to have such a good turnout. And um, yeah, reach out to us if you have any questions. And certainly from us to you, we'd love to see you next year. Uh, I think our program is a six through 12 program, but we know people make a variety of decisions for different reasons. And so uh, um, good luck to you, whatever, whatever that ends up being. I'm going to stop recording now.